So the most damageable species, they usually have a stripe on their back of a different color, a large stripe. So if you see that, uh, it's a cutworm. Some of them have um, a stripe a little bit lighter, so it's sometimes a little bit harder to differentiate. But it looks like this. And uh, I will show you some adults. The cutworms are most larvae. So they will turn into butterflies. You can grab those preserved specimens. And so they are uh, oh, no, this is but also uh, hard to easily uh, recognize the cutworm. Most cutworms that are economically important have two spots on their wing. One is uh, elliptical, the first spot. The second one is bean shape. So if you see uh, moth with uh, a decent size, this size, with those two spots, you are in front of a cutworm. So here I have some plants that you can have a look at uh, with damages uh, made by cutworms, by the red back cutworm that you can see in the petri dishes. So the red back cutworm feeds only on foliage. And uh, we'll eventually clip uh, some plants if it's at the seedling stage. So the most damageable stage is the seedling. And um, so I reared many cutworms on um, canola that was actually treated with insecticide with a seed coating, seed uh, coated with an insecticide for uh, flavidols and uh, it doesn't affect uh, the cutworms at all. So the best way to control cutworms is to scoot early, look for uh, plants that are clipped or damaged, then try to collect cutworms, and if you see uh, that there are many cutworms around, then you can eventually decide to spray. So they, most of them come out at night, so after the sun sets, so it's when it's the, mest, the most efficient. Plus humidity is higher, so it's when it's the most efficient. And um, there are some natural enemies of cutworms. So here I have uh, some wasps. So I have some that emerge from uh, army cutworm, wet back cutworms, pale western cutworms, and also some flies. So you can go uh, around. So what those um, will do, they will actually uh, lay an egg inside the cutworm. The larva will develop inside and will kill the cutworm. Look at it. Here it's an example of a cabbage looper, very, very close to the alfalfa looper. So if you see the first picture, this is the looper um, larva. So it feeds on uh, canola, beet, alfalfa, uh, different crops. Oh, yeah. as well. So second, the second picture, you see uh, those are the wasp larvae that are literally exploding the the cabbage looper, so they will uh, literally kill it. And if you flip the page, you see uh, a kind of stick and ball. You can commonly see those balls on grass or on crops, just white, white or yellow balls. So you see all those white balls, they are very fuzzy and they are stuck to grass. So yellow or white, those are parasitoid cases. So out of a single uh, fuzzy ball like that will emerge about a hundred of parasitoid. That will then actively look for uh, cutworms and uh, alfalfa loopers and kill them. So those are bigger, those are a little smaller. Here I have some uh, cabbage loopers. Cabbage loopers are basically the same thing as alfalfa looper. The only difference is that they cannot survive the winter here. So they migrate uh, during the season. If I can have <coughs> those ones back, I will show you something very cool. So I have some um, loopers here, I have some parasitoids. So if I put them together, something very cool could happen. Cage fight. Exactly.
The thing is not windy. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, here you see the looper is not attacked right away. So they have a stinger at the end of their abdomen. 